Winston Churchill called World War II's Battle of the Bulge the greatest American battle of the war. Is there any good reason to say this? Well, let's see. Today, Alejandro Hernández and Sergio Rodríguez present the Battle of the Bulge. The Battle of the Bulge fought over the winter months of 1944-1945 was the last major Nazi offensive against the Allies in World War II. The battle was a last-ditch attempt by Hitler to split the Allies in two in their drive towards Germany and destroy their ability to supply their themselves. He launched a massive attack using three armies on the Allies, which would, in his mind, destabilize the, their accord and also take the huge port of Antwerp through which a great deal of supplies was reaching the Allies. It was a German penetration into the American lines which the Americans uh, had surrounded and eventually sealed off. It was launched to the deadly forest Ardennes region of Iona in eastern Belgium, northeast France and Luxembourg. The surprise attack caught the Allied forces completely off guard. American forces bore the brunt of the attack and incurred the highest casualties of any operation during the war. The battle also severely depleted Germany's armed forces, and they were largely unavailable to replace them. German personnel and later Luftwaffe Aircraft also sustained heavy losses. Hitler believed that his forces would be able to surround and cut off Canada's 1st Army, America's 1st and 9th Armies, and Britain's 2nd Army. On paper, it was a seemingly absurd plan, especially as Germany had been in retreat since D-Day. Her military was depleted of supplies and was facing the awesome might of the Allies. However, Hitler, as commander-in-chief of the military, decreed that the attack should take place. The battle started with a two-hour bombardment of the Allies' lines that was followed by a huge armored attack, with the majority of the German armored might based at the Schneefeld. The Germans experienced great success to start with. Why was this? The Allies were surprised by the attack. They had received little intelligence that such an attack would take place. Before the attack started, English-speaking German soldiers dressed in American uniforms were behind the lines of the Allies and caused havoc by spreading misinformation, changing road signs and cutting telephone lines. Those who were caught were shot after a court martial. Weather was also in Hitler's favor. Low cloud and fog meant that the superior air force of the Allies could not be used, especially the tank-busting typhoons of the Royal Air Force or Mustang fighters from the USAAF, which would have been used against the German tanks. The weather was typical for the Ardennes in winter, the ground was hard enough for military vehicles to cross, and this suited the armored attack Hitler envisaged. However, the success of the Germans lasted just two days. Despite punching a bulge into the Allies' front line, the Germans could not capitalize on this. The Germans had based their attack on massive armored onslaught. However, such an attack required fuel to maintain it, and the Germans simply did not possess such quantities of fuel. By December 22nd, the weather started to clear, thus allowing the Allies to bring the air power into force, and on the following day, the Americans started a counterattack against the Germans. On Christmas Eve, the Allies experienced the first ever attack by jet bombers. 16 Germans Me-262 attacked radial jets in an attempt to upset the ability of the Allies to supply themselves. However, without fuel for their armored vehicles, any success in the air was meaningless. The Germans had advanced 60 miles in two days, but from December 18th on, they were in a position of a stalemate. The fighting was ferocious. The New Year's period was a time of particularly intensive fighting as the Germans attempted to start a second front in Oberland. This time, in the Ardennes con coincided with a period of intense cold and rain, and the soldiers on the ground faced very difficult conditions. Trench food was a common problem for infantrymen, as was exposure. Mid-January of 1945, the, eff the effect of lack of fuel was becoming evident, as the Germans had to simply abandon their vehicles. The 5th SS Panzer Division had to make their way back to, Germ to Germany on foot. This was the unit that was responsible for the Malmary massacre. Hitler had convinced himself that the alliance between Britain, France and America in the western sector of Europe was not strong and that a major attack and defeat would break up the alliance. Some experts argue that it is rather Hitler's attempt to reassert his personal political control over the general staff and the inter-Nazi hierarchy that were having low bets regarding the future of the Reich. Therefore, 
He ordered a massive attack against that were primarily American forces. The attack is strictly known as the Ardennes Offensive. But, be but because the initial attack by the Germans created a bulge in the Allied front line, it has become more known as the Battle of the Bulge. It is important to note that the most weakened Allies offensive was the one located in Ardennes, so possibly Hitler could have thought that they would have won. Hitler's plan was to launch a massive attack using three armies on the Allies which would, in his mind, destabilize their accord and also take the huge apport of the Antwerp through which a great deal of supplies was reaching the Allies. As this was an attack made by the Allies, but it was planned by the Nazis, there was no other objective than to defend their genes from the attack. Obviously, this defense wasn't separating from the general objectives of the Allies for the war. Getting closer to the German territory, defeating as many Germans as they could, liberating the villages and the people that were being tortured and killed by the Germans, and finally getting the Allies closer to the victory of the World War II. The battle is significant in the course of World War II because it's seen as Hitler's ma last major offensive in the war. While the battle was intended to split Allied lands and force negotiated peace, American forces were able to continue the battle and inflict heavier losses on the German forces, weakening them until the end of the war. For Adolf Hitler, the battle marked the end of eight years of offensive maneuvers in the West, large and small, dating back to his occupation of the Rhineland. More ominously, the battle marked the beginning of the final military phase for Hitler, emphasizing Nazi fanatism over battlefield logic as the way to overcome shortages of men and equipment. Such fanatism would soon cost many Germans, young and old, their lives. Furthermore, the most of the African-American troops were serving only as drivers of trucks and longshoremen. In the middle of the Battle of the Ardennes, the General Eisenhower was dramatically sparse of troops of replacement for the military existing units. All of them were of totally white composition. In consequence, he decided to allow that all African-American soldiers should take a weapon and join the military white units to f fight for the first time. This marked up a new era in the army forces of the Allies, in which there was no segregation and more soldiers. For the Americans and British, it helped them to position themselves for the great mission into Germany. Meanwhile, in the East, the Russians had launched an earth-shattering attack involving 300 divisions. Within weeks, they would be a hundred miles from Berlin and closing in Adolf Hitler. Boris used over 840,000 men, 1,616 tanks, 4,155 artillery pieces, 6,000 planes, and the Nazis used over 500,000 men, 1,800 tanks, from which 106 were panzers, 1,900 artillery pieces, and 2,400 planes. Leaders that managed the battle for the Allies were the high-ranking officer, Carney Hodge, the General George Patton and the Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery. The leaders of the Nazis were the General of the 5th Panzer Army, Hasso von Mantoffel, and the General of the Heer, Erich Brandenburger. In the Battle of the Bulge, the American forces had over 19,276 losses. 41,493 casualties and 23,544 men that went missing or became prisoners of war. The British Army had over 200 losses, 969 casualties and 239 men went missing or became prisoners of war. The German Army had over 15,652 losses, 41,600 casualties and 27,582 men weren't missing or became prisoners of war. The Allied forces lost over 1,500 tanks, 450 armored cars, and 1,000 aircrafts, while the Nazis lost over 544 tanks, 351 armored cars, and 800 aircrafts. Nowadays, the Battle of the Vault is remembered through multiple ways. The first one is through the museums that there are regarding the war, as the Bastogne War Museum in Belgium, and the Museum of the Battle of Bulge in Clairvaux in Luxembourg. Apart, there are several memorials to commemorate this battle, as the Marjasson Memorial in Bastogne, Belgium. The Marjasson Memorial is a monument honoring the memory of American soldiers wounded or killed during the battle. Also, the US Veterans Affairs remembers them 
and gives them a special treatment for their services to the country during the war. The Germans lost so many experienced troops and equipment that, that there was no way their army could launch another attack on Allied forces. The Battle of the Volge is most significant in that it ruined the German army and in essence brought about the end of the war. So the battle is often remembered for its influence to the end of the war. The Battle of Volge was also a horrendous experience for the forces that fought the battles. Veterans on both sides witnessed atrocities from the German massacres of civilians to fellow commanders freezing to death. The Battle of the Bulge is a momentous battle of World War II, not just because it brought about the end of the German army and the Nazi reign, but also because of the profound effect it had on soldiers who fought in Ardennes. The Battle of the Bulge was probably the largest battle fought by the Americans in World War II. 600,000 American troops were involved in the battle. The Americans lost over 20,000 men, and before it ended, the American army had already requested 35,000 more men to fight. Could the Germans have won the battle? Almost certainly not, as they had one huge problem. Their inability to keep armored columns supplied with fuel. Any form of armor attack needed a constant supply of fuel, and a light bombing of fuel plants in Germany meant that such supplies did not exist. Concluding, this battle weakened even more the Nazis, considering all the collateral damage and losses that were left for them. Hence, it was a key factor in weakening their forces so the Allies could invade Germany and consequently win the war.